blessing ceremony, and we're going to Paranat Yoga Ramananda writes, Babaji's mission in India has been to assist prophets in carrying out their special dispensations. He thus qualifies for the scriptural classification as Mahavatar. He has stated that he gave yoga initiation to Shankara, the ancient founder of the Swami order, and to Kabir, famous medieval saint. His chief 19th century disciple was, as we know, the Hedi Mahashai, a revivalist of the lost Priya art. The Mahavatar is in constant communion with Christ. Together they send out vibrations of redemption and have planned the spiritual technique of salvation for this age. The work of these two fully illuminated masters, one with the body and the other without it, is to inspire the nations to forsake suicidal wars, race hatreds, and religious sectarianism, and the boomerang evils of materialism. Babaji is well aware of the trend of modern times, especially of the influence and complexities of Western civilization. And we realize the necessity of spreading the self-liberations of yoga equally in the West and in the East. Great prophets like Christ and Krishna come to earth for a specific and spectacular purpose. They depart as soon as it is accomplished. Other avatars like Babaji undertake work which is concerned more with the slow evolutionary progress of man during the centuries than with any one outstanding event in history. Such masters always veil themselves from the gross public gaze and have the power to become invisible at will. And again, this exhortation that I think it's good for us always to remember. Whenever anyone utters with reverence the name of Babaji, Lady Mahashai said, that devotee attracts an instant spiritual blessing. Such I have found to be true in my life. Babaji is the guiding influence of this work of self-realization, whatever its outward form, and but also it's his his influence is much more than just that. It's, it's as it says in the autobiography of Yogi, it's to guide that evolutionary expression of liberating techniques to guide mankind as a whole in this age. And I remember Swamiji once saying uh, about our work particularly, about Ananda Sangha, when we came to India in the early years, 10, 12 years ago, and began the work here, he was addressing a group of us, and he said this more than once. He said, remember what we do here, Ananda Sangha, this is not my work, meaning himself, Swami Kriyananda, and he said, and certainly it's not your work either. This is Babaji's work, and it's Master's work. But when he said those, he said Babaji first. He says, it's Babaji's work. And of course, Master would follow second because he was an instrument for Babaji. He was an instrument. He, would be, he had been chosen by Babaji to be an outward expression of this work of, of self-realization, and particularly of Kriya Yoga, the spread of Kriya Yoga into the world in this particular age. Because Kriya Yoga is in harmony with this modern age of energy, this age of outward expression that you can see coming up. I've been in India now just 10 years, although I had visited years earlier in the 1990s as well. But I've seen so much change taking place right before my eyes. <laughs> you can see it. And this is unusual in the historical scheme of things. But you see this happening, not just in India, I was in China last year, and I was amazed, just all these things coming up. When we live in one's own country, as I have in the United States for most of my life, you don't see something so much, when you're because you're right next to it. But when you go away and then you come back, oh my gosh, look how much everything has changed. So you may not see it even because having grown up here, perhaps, but I suspect you have, <laughs> because we see it accelerating. And in this age of energy, Babaji, the great ones, have are guiding 
the spiritual evolution in these ages, the outward world changes, they're guiding it so that we as individual souls also spiritually evolve appropriately in that age. So the masters have sent in this age as they have in every age. And this is something to remember. It's not just unique to now that the masters are guiding the spiritual evolution of this world. This is something that takes place always. It's in the tradition, of course, here in India, the rishis, wherever they might be residing, on this plane or on a higher plane, that have been guiding this world throughout the ages. And in a sense, Babaji represents that in our line and beyond our line, in the world at large. I went to, uh, as we know, the history of, of Babaji appearing to Master and appearing to many over the centuries to guide this work. He talks about appearing to be the guru of Shankara, even how long ago was that? <coughs> so I, I went to China also last year. And the reason I went there is because Babaji, as, as some of you had heard, I've related this before, Babaji appeared in vision to a lady there to begin a work of Kriya Yoga in China itself. And that ended up with me going there. And who knows where it will go from there in the centuries ahead. This is a long-term rhythm, the same thing. I've heard the similar stories elsewhere as well. Babaji appearing to people in other countries, enlightening them with very similar visions, self-realization, and often referring them to this tradition of Kriya Yoga. We celebrate today, on this or this weekend, the uh, Babaji's in memoriam. And there's an interesting story of the, I was asking somebody yesterday to confirm my memory of this, of why this time of year. And as it turned out, I was able yesterday to confirm it by finding a, an old uh, tape, actually. I saw me endeavor, she and Diana found the tape, but they shared it, uh, of uh, Swami giving a discourse at a Kriya, well, perhaps it was a ceremony similar to this in memory of Babaji many years ago. And he had come, Swami Kriyananda, to India in the latter part of the 1950s and in the early 1960s. And upon coming to India at that time, working with YSS, Self-Realization Fellowship, they realized that all of the masters had a special day associated with them, but Babaji didn't. You could sort of think in term, terms of Janmashtami as, as an incarnation, as Babaji said, of, uh, of an incarnation of Krishna. But he didn't have particular days. Babaji is that incarnation. He didn't have a particular day. And so they decided they needed one. And so they began to determine what might be that today. And they decided through various ways to investigate that time, that day, when Babaji appeared to our guru Paramahansa Yogananda in Forgar Park Road, before Yogananda went to America. And through various consultations, family members who were still living at that time, and tried to make uh, a chart of master's schedule. And they, they figured that uh, it was, uh, the 25th was on that day that master met or Babaji appeared to Master, and it was that day was chosen for to celebrate Babaji Day. And that was a very momentous occasion, and I'd like to read also from the autobiography an account of that. And it's very inspiring. One early morning I began to pray, this is Paramahansa Yogananda speaking, with an adamant determination to continue to even die praying until I heard the voice of God. I wanted his blessings and assurance that I would not lose myself in the fogs of modern utilitarianism. My heart was set to go to America, but even more strongly was it resolved to hear the solace of divine permission. I prayed and prayed, muffling my sobs. No answer came. My silent petition increased in excruciating crescendo until... At noon, I had reached the zenith. My brain could no longer withstand the pressure of my agonies. If I cried once more with an increased depth of my inner passion, 
I felt as though my brain would split. Now that's how we should pray. <laughs> At that moment, there came a knock outside the vestibule adjoining the Garpur Rural Room in which I was sitting. Opening the door, I saw a young man in the scanty garb of the renunciate. He came in, closed the door behind him, and refusing my request to sit down, indicated with a gesture that he wished to talk to me while standing. He must be Babaji, I thought. Dazed because the man before me had the features of a younger lady, Mahashaya. He answered my thought, yes, I am Babaji. He spoke melodiously in Hindi. Our beloved father has heard your prayer. He commands me to tell you, follow the paths of your guru and go to America. Fear not, you will be protected. After a vibrant, vibrant pause, Babaji addressed me again. You were the one I have chosen to spread the message of Kriya Yoga in the West. Long ago, I met your guru, Yukteswar, at the Kumbh Mela. I told him then that I would send you to him for training. I was speechless, choked with devotional awe at his presence, and deeply touched to hear from his own lips that he had guided me to Sri Yukteswar. I lay prostrate before the deathless guru. He graciously lifted me from the floor, telling me many things about my life. He then gave me some personal instruction and uttered a few secret prophecies. Kriya Yoga, the scientific technique of God-realization, he finally said with solemnity, will ultimately spread in all lands and aid in harmonizing the nations through man's personal, transcendent, transcendental perception of the Infinite Father. Until now, I have recounted, I have never recounted to anyone this story of my meeting with Babaji, holding it as the most sacred of my human experiences. I've hidden it in my heart, but the thought occurred to me that readers of this autobiography may be more inclined to believe in the reality of the secluded Babaji and his world, and his world interests if I relate that I saw him with my own eyes. It reminds me of how St. Antony of the desert to resolve a dispute that was raging in the church, or the church was called out of the desert after 90 years of being in solitude there to come and speak and resolve the issue. And he said only four words and everything ceased. He said, I have seen him. And everybody immediately, it was, that was the end of the dispute. Because he, the dispute was over Christ in that case. And in the same way, Master testifies here that I have seen him. And that testimony that Babaji is there guiding this work. Now it says, it seems, you may have the impression from reading that, that, and some people I've heard say that well, Babaji came to Master and sent him, or he went to the West, or Master went to the West to, you might say, proselytize or missionize uh, America. But that wasn't the intention. Master didn't go of his own will. He went only because Babaji had told him to go. He went there and he didn't go to as, as a special mission to America. He went there in order to harmonize East and West. It was a mission that had to the West because somebody had to go. And through the America representing at that time in history, this time in history, the epitome of, of the West and the materialism of the West, but a very dynamic uh, materialism it is, that it was through that, if, if change could be brought about, seeds could be planted in that culture, then they would then sprout throughout the West. But it was, mission was not only to the West, it was to the world. But it was to reach the world. In order to reach the world, Babaji's words had to go through, you might say. It would have, it would have taken, it would have spread no matter but it would have been time, it would have taken more time. In this way, the West is brought in to this unity that is predicted to be the inevitable result of this mission of harmonizing East and West, particularly through the teachings of Kriya Yoga. 
teachings of inner communion, each person going deep within themselves to have a direct experiential reality revealed to them through their own efforts, through being able to and to being able to know for themselves that yes, just as Babaji or his master could say of Babaji, I have seen him, just as Saint Anthony could say of Christ, I have seen him. So each of us, we do not believe, we have faith, and maybe we do only believe, but we need more than belief in this world when it comes to spirituality. For many, perhaps that's enough. But the real seeker wants something more until we can have that inner experience so that we can say for ourselves, I have seen him. Not necessarily him in terms of Babaji or Christ or some outward form, but I have experienced God for myself. And then nobody can take that from us because it has been our personal reality and experience. And this is the message that Babaji is sent out into the world that you too can experience all of these. And his messengers have been many. And our guru and our line of gurus are included in that many. They have come for that and they have come to do that. Paramahansa Yogananda, when he went, was often asked in one form or another about various aspects of why he was doing this or why he was doing that. He would often speak about the Bhagavad Gita and he would, he would compare the Gita to the Christian, the Bible, showing parallel passages. And people would ask, well, why don't you include other, speak about the unity of other religions, just the, you know, the India, America, what about the rest? And I said, yes, but that is not Babaji. This is what he told me to do. And then he didn't argue. He said, he was loyal to Babaji. Now, I find this, this thought that I first expressed of Swami saying, remember, this is not your work, it's not my work, this is Babaji's work. I find that very comforting because oftentimes trying to carry on this tradition of working with the Nanda Sangha, we, you, we have projects that we want to accomplish and things that we want to do, and some will succeed and some will fail, and then inevitably working in, in this arena, we uh, are anxious for things to succeed more than fail, and we worry about such things. But whenever those pressures build up, I always remember, I have my job to do, but this is Babaji's work. And Babaji, the success or failure of this is in your hands, and you've been guiding this work far, far longer than I've been even able to be on this earth. So I'm sure that you know what to do. And my job is to do my very, very best results are yours. And isn't this actually, why not, uh, actually what uh, uh, the Gita is really saying too? Isn't this what all the scriptures really say? That this is God's work. And I think we should expand upon that thought, not just from serving outwardly, this is my case here in Amasanga, but it's an attitude we might wish to take whatever our particular duties in life. We take it very seriously, all of us, I'm sure, that which we do. And at some level, I hope you take it seriously, but not that seriously. We, in other words, seriously enough to be responsible, because we must act, as Yogananda said, I will will, I will act, I will reason. But the second half of that prayer was, but I doubt my reason, will, and activity to the highest and all. So yes, we have to act. We have to. Inaction, as the Gita says, is impossible. We have to act. But yet, we have to remember also that this is God's work. And in a sense, that idea that this is Babaji's work represents really, it's all Babaji's work. It's all God's work. It's all Divine Mother's work. My role is to do my best. And I think this is the attitude that we want to approach in everything we do as Babaji's work. And remember that little exhortation. Whenever we remember and call upon the name of Babaji with reverence, there is an instantaneous blessing. I felt that. And that blessing comes, not that blessing comes with the sense of divine protection. That blessing comes with, the, with perhaps in a, an easing 
of one's cares and responsibilities that comes in perhaps intuitive guidance. However it comes, if you're sensitive, you'll begin to feel it. So the message for me is, is call always. Live in that prayer, that call of reverence. So if we have reverence, approach life itself with reverence. And let Babaji be a symbol, you might say, of life itself. Approach it with reverence. And you'll find not just a momentary blessing, but we'll find that we can live our whole lives in a uh, in, in an attitude of blessing, in receptivity of blessings. In a sense, this is what's referred to as living our life in a state of grace. We find ourselves guided inexorably to the right thing in every detail. So today, let's keep this weekend and the week ahead and beyond. Let's keep Babaji in our mind and prayers. We're now going to have a blessing ceremony and we're going to